Of course, we're coming to you live from uh, Kericho County, and uh, we've been on the trail of uh, former State House controller Franklin Bett, and of course, he's also been a cabinet uh, minister. And of course, when you're talking about the intricacies that revolves around transition, and uh, of course, the emotions uh, that um, surrounds that particular period, there's no better person uh, or no better uh, better than Bett in terms of uh, actually divulging what exactly goes on uh, behind uh, the curtains, and of course, uh, uh, what exactly goes on in the minds of uh, these state officers who are actually now seeing uh, a regime uh, going home and another coming in, the anticipation, of course, the apprehension and everything. So, Mweshmiwa, karibu sana. Thank you very much. You, you've not been in the limelight for quite some time. Uh, by choice. By choice. Yes. You've been, of course, up and down uh, going about your own business. I've been about going about my own business. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, also allowing the younger people mm -hmm. to start learning uh, the ropes. Of, uh, of this trade, the drops, drops of, of, of the, the ropes of leadership. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing uh, for the last uh, several months. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I stood with the current governor of Kericho. Mm -hmm. I supported him fully, and uh, I campaigned for him uh, because I thought he's uh, a better choice. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with, um, you said that you've actually stepped uh, aside just to allow the young political uh, generation to actually take a uh, center stage. Are you happy with uh, what is happening? Yeah, I think I'm happy. Mm -hmm. uh, take note mm -hmm. that uh, when you are into a new situation, mm -hmm. there, there, there would be some mistakes here and there, mm -hmm. and those mistakes will be corrected over time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is nothing perfect mm -hmm. to any person. Mm -hmm. uh, we are all not perfect. Uh, we are all able to learn, able to correct those mistakes. But the most important thing is the ability to accept a mistake and correct that mistake. And, and move forward. And move forward. Fantastic. When you're talking about uh, uh, accepting a... Uh, uh uh, new situations, new happenings. Of course, there's no better person uh, than you because you've been a state house controller and, of course, you've also been a cabinet uh, uh, secretary in this uh, country. Just paint a picture for us. What exactly happens just before we move into the next uh, regime? Uh, I want to disabuse <laughs> the people of this country from that notion <laughs> that uh, there are intricacies being played <laughs> in assumption of power <laughs> by a new regime. Why am I saying that? There are specific laws that govern uh, assumption of power. You begin with the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. It specifies how it is done. First of all, the election, the declaration of the winner, and after the declaration of the winner, there is a period given for the, any person who is complaining, uh, who would then have the chance to go to uh, a court of law, uh, in this case for the president, the Supreme Court, and uh, the motions of the Supreme Court have got also their timelines, and after those timelines are completed, uh, then there is the, the judgment or the ruling by the, by, the high, by the Supreme Court, and the law says after seven days, you expect uh, the new president, president-elect, to be sworn into office. So there, are also, there is also a, a complete piece of legislation, Assumption of Office Act. It's there, and it details all the procedures, who is supposed to do what, and uh, the chair of that committee uh, is usually the head of the public service. The public service that is incumbent. Uh, that's why you are now seeing Joseph Kinyua uh, heading uh, that Assumption uh, Office. And uh, the, 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 that law details one step to the other. And that is the way they are doing it now. So I want to remove from the minds of Kenyans. Kenyans yeah. There is no any casework <laughs> or uh, trial and error on the assumption of a new head of state. Yeah. Fa uh, fan fantastic. You, you've said that is actually uh, uh, laid, is down, in law. laid down in law. Yes. Uh, we, we've seen emotions um, uh, arising, uh, people shedding tears, that is uh, human. and of course um, excitement that comes with um, in terms of uh, now we are heading into a, a new regime and probably I'll get a chance. And of course um, now uh, this my, uh, the, my regime is actually now going home and I'm going and I'm back, going back home. And uh, of course the emotions, as you said, is human and is expensive. Yes. right now when you're clearing your desk uh, in, in state um, house you're clearing your desk and and, and you're about now to go what I goes want in your to mind also make it clear yes 
to all and sundry. When you get employment, there is a moment that employment will end. Either it ends on your age, that you are now 60 years old, and your term of office has ended. Mine, for example, in the AFC, the law says a chairman is appointed for three months, and after three months, it can be extended three for years. another uh, three years. Yes. Three years. It can be extended for another three years. After those two terms, that person, that position is then taken away from you. So that's exactly what the law says. The same thing with employment. Uh, it can also be taken by, I say it, by, by your age. It can also be taken by the office. Take, for example, uh, in the counties, the CEC members, they are only to serve for five, e five years. That is in the term that is running. Now, it should not surprise them that that period has come to an end. Similarly, the head of the public service knows very well when a new administration comes in, they have to take in another head of public service. So it ends there. The only thing which I want to plead with this country, uh, like it is in Western world, the public service is delinked from the political uh, arena. It stays on its own. If the political arm of government fails, you will find in the Western world the civil service, the public service, can easily continue running the country smoothly. Not in our place. I would want to urge that one day we will be able to go that way. In your opinion, or in your opinion, why is it so? It is so because of political alignments. It is so because of also uh, our egos. And again, the issue of tribal, the tribal guard also comes in. So uh, I, I would want that uh, one day tribalism would be a thing of the past in this country. I would want one day that civil service can run the state when matters political are being handled uh, elsewhere to be finalized. I'm not saying for one moment that it can be a parallel government. No. This public service must run under the guidance and direction of the political section of government. But when any of them fails, the other one should be able to run the country smoothly. So this fear, these emotions until you weep, I expect it. I've been here for 10 years. I've been here for five years. Now I'm out and, uh, and I don't know where I'm going. And this person I have served, uh, again in our political situation, there is some element of uh, ridiculing, some element of... Uh, like you want to appear like there was some cajoling. There is no cajoling here. The law is clear. And that's why last week I said, somebody was saying, Uhuru may not be able to hand over the reign of leadership to William Ruto. That is, according to me, nonsense. That is contrary to the law. It has been declared the winner is William Ruto, whom I hereby congratulate and wish him well in his leadership. It has been declared. So uh, anything else is just gossip. Gossip. Anything else is just talk. Hot air. Hot air, like it was <laughs> said. Nostalgic moments while you're serving. Yeah. Um, one, I've always given myself the, the responsibility of appreciating that in a, in a beginning, there is an end. In the beginning, there is an end. I want public servants to have the same in mind. Even the politicians, I want them to have the same in mind. That they, to a beginning, there is an end. But here again, even if there is a, an end, there is a country for us to look after. It doesn't matter whether Franklin Bate is no longer there. The country has got to move on. The development of this country has got to move on. So, uh, I would not want myself to be so nostalgic because, I mean, I, I don't have the, I, I had no monopoly on leadership. I had no monopoly on issues of government. I would want this younger person to learn what I have known out of me or by reading what is there so that we lead this country to a better country. In essence, you're saying that 
uh, yes, you've been appointed, been given a very uh, a, a good position for that matter in a government to serve. Uh, bear in mind that after a given time uh, period, that will be out of government. And when you're out of government, Mwishimua, as uh, you've rightly told me, that uh, you are allowing the youth to actually come to the fore, and you're also doing your other stuff, that you can actually actually serve also in other capacities out of government yes, in public. Sector. That's true. Uh, what I want also to say to fellows who are retiring from government, either retiring at the age of retirement or retiring early, I want them to realize there is life after retirement. The fact that you have retired does not mean you go home to die. Much more the trappings of power. There's yes, a bodyguard, the there's, a, there's yeah. that siren and everything. But you have got to have in mind that one day these things will not be there. Don't internalize those trappings of power. Because the moment you internalize, it will frustrate you when that time is gone. I have never allowed myself that way. I'm enjoying myself, my brother. But I now want all retirees to do the same. Go and engage yourself in some activity. In this country, I can say openly today, there is every opportunity for, every each, for each one of us, retired or not retired, to do something. There are opportunities of investments. There are oppo- and you don't need to have a lot of money to start. So don't retire. In, or don't, don't retire into, uh, uh, into a state that you are now disabled because you have now finished uh, working in government. And I want us also to play the fact that don't use humility in your leadership. Use forthrightness, straightforwardness in your leadership. And tomorrow you will not be having issues. You will not be having issues saying, oh, who you bana, a little sumbua. Who you bana, Alitu Nyonga Akiwa Serkalini. Who you bana, Alitu Kashifu. Who you bana. Tafadali, let us go with humility. Let us go with straightforward. Remember the truth as you lead. And that is my message to the new and incoming leadership. I keep reading, even today, I keep reading that wewe utaona ulitusumbua. Wewe ulifanya I want to plead with the people in coming in. The country voted almost 50-50. Let us not engage division in the country. Let us bury division. And the only way to bury division is to forgive one another, to accept one another. I am appreciating the incoming president, President William Ruto. I'm appreciating him. I've been seeing him receiving the losers who are on the other side who are in a semio. That is good. That is perfect. Because you are saying, in Kalenjin, we say, ukipika na mieleka na mtu, na ukisha angusha ye chini, usifuate ye chini. Kama ameshika nyasi, usishike yeye. Iyo ndiyo, kitu ambacho ni naomba wa Kenya wote ambao wameshika hatamu ya uungosi. Is an elder sitting out of uh, the government and of course political life you are alive to uh, the growth that this country is having in terms of uh, uh, political maturity and institutional maturity also. From where you sit, are you happy with uh, what you've seen? We saw an election in um, uh, 2001, uh, we saw another one in 2007, we have seen another one in 2013, uh, uh, 17, 17, and 2022. 22, yeah. We are no doubt growing. Are you happy with the growth? Yes, yes. In fact, particularly, I want to congratulate each and every Kenyan who participated either by voting or by being present in this last election. The whole world was expecting Kenya to explode. But thank God, peace prevailed. Why did it prevail? Because of the maturity of our people. Because of our people accepting realities, accepting the law. When the Supreme Court ruled, I was amazed. A fellow in uh, Kondele said, it is over and we want Raila to come home. I mean, that was heart- heartwarming. That was good. I was seeing maturity. I was seeing people who are learning. I was seeing people who are appreciating peace. And that peace is development. So 
that bit is that bit was that touched me a lot because when I try to remember what happened two zero zero seven, my heart simply goes down. I simply get um, depressed on what happened that time because I played a lot in bringing down those uh, the hot air that time, not this hot air of uh, <laughs> of this petition, mm. and. Uh, so when I saw them going the way they went, things going the way they went this time, I was so appreciative. I even expect better situations in the year 2027. And the only way to expect even better is for the winners of this election to embrace Each other. their opponents. The opponents yeah. Bring them in. Let us work together. This country belongs to all of us, whether you were on the other side or not. It belongs to all of us. All of us. Fantastic. Yeah. As a senior citizen, of course, it's just a, a few hours before, uh, below uh, 24 hours before the uh, president-elect is actually officially sworn in. You must be having expectations. Uh, what are some of these expectations that you're expecting that this government, when it uh, officially kicks on, that uh, it will be tackling so then, of course, Kenyans can actually start feeling the impact of uh, their footprints? Uh, before, remember to come back to that, but before you go there, uh, I, I want to make it clear on the on the law. Uh, tomorrow morning, William Ruto will be in his residence. He will then receive a presidential motorcade, full, same size, same number as that of President Kenyatta. Similarly, his deputy Rigadi will be having the same in his own residence. At the appointed hour, the two motor motorcades will snack to Kasarani. On the other side from the State House after they arrive, then the outgoing president will similarly, with his usual motorcade, snack to Kasarani. At Kasarani, President Uhuru will be expected before the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, Mother Kaome will be expected to hand over to William Ruto notably three items three instruments of power one he will hand over the constitution and that will be saying this country runs or its governance is based on the law mm -hmm. so he will hand over the national copy of the constitution of the republic he will then hand over this word that sword is more than 50 years, or 50 years. That is the sword which was given to Chomo Kenyatta by the colonial government when he was taking over the reins of this country. It has been passed on from one president to the other. He will hand over that sword to President William Ruto. Then there will be a 21 can salute which will be sounded. That again is all specified in that law. So those are the three items that William Ruto will face tomorrow. After all that is done, then the presidential standard of Uhuru Kenyatta will come down. And at the same time, the presidential standard for William Ruto will be going up. Then the president-elect now is the president. After he has taken an oath of office. That oath of office will be given by Mother Karua, uh, not by Mother Karua, by uh, Mother Koome, uh, supported by the registrar of the of the High Court. Mm. And when all that is done, the outgoing president will leave the stadium first, mm. straight into State House, to wait for the new occupant to arrive and to hand over. And the outgoing president, with his pleasure, may give him a meal mm -hmm. as, a, as a as a way of receiving we africans of course that we africans yes mm -hmm. yes we may give him a meal mm -hmm. after that then the outgoing president leaves state house mm -hmm. and that is leaving and uh, to be now an ordinary kenyan citizen mm -hmm. but of course will be will will hold the respect that he was our president mm -hmm. but i want to appreciate him also for the Thanks. time he has been with us and I want to appreciate him for what he has, for the role he has played 
in our history. In our history for the last uh, for the uh, 10, 10 years or 10 so. Years, yeah. Yes, oh, that, that was actually was my last uh, uh, question, uh -huh. but uh, you've, you've decided to actually uh, crown it up. But nonetheless, go now we can go back now answer. to the question that is uh, your expectations as a senior citizen. Yes, mm -hmm. my expectation mm -hmm. is that President w uh, William Ruto, mm -hmm. in his campaign, mm -hmm. placed to the public mm -hmm. an agenda. And that agenda is quite rich. And I expect him to now studiously look at that manifesto. To studiously look at that manifesto. And I have no doubt in him. Uh, I've worked with him before. I have no doubt he will be able to do it in a very microscopic manner. Uh, to look at the, the manifesto as he gave out. And uh, I would expect him, therefore, what he promised on health, what he promised on agriculture, what he promised on uh, roads, what he promised on uh, social life of Kenyans, I would expect him to go step by step. But my major one, mm. and I would say President William Ruto, mm. my brother, mm. deal with the issue of agriculture. Mm. Deal with the issue of agriculture. Mm. That is where our hope is. Mm -hmm. That is where our food is. We want to be, we don't want to be uh, uh, beggars. We don't want to be beggars. We don't want to be deficient again in food. We want, our land is blessed. It is rich soil, lots of rain. Thank God who has been doing, who did all this. We need to harness, we need to exploit this resource. And we will feed Kenyans, and we will feed East Africa, and we will feed the world. Think that way, mm. there's going to be a lot of wealth amongst the people. Mm. There's going to be a lot of employment. Mm. These hustlers mm. will be employed on agriculture, will be employed in selling agricultural produce, mm. uh, and agro value addition and ag chain. Agro business. I was going there. Mm. Value addition chain. Mm. So, Mr. President, mm. I am with you totally on issues agriculture. And I'm available to support that, fact, that area completely. Mm. It is our hope. Thank you very much, uh, Mwishimu. Of course, there's quite a lot uh, we will discuss and it will take, of course, days just to tap into the rich uh, knowledge that you have, of course, in terms of uh, running the government, how things actually happen uh, around uh, transition and, of course, moving forward. We appreciate your time and, of course, no doubt we will be coming back uh, again to you some other time so that then we can actually continue to tell us more on exactly in terms uh, of uh, government. That, of course, is uh, the former State House uh, controller, Franklin uh, uh, Bet, of course, uh, telling us uh, exactly what he is, he is expecting of um, uh, the incoming uh, president, but more importantly, also painting a picture uh, for us of exactly what will be happening tomorrow before uh, the president-elect actually is sworn in and uh, assumes uh, the reins of uh, power.